most important questions you and I can ask when studying the Torah in particular is the question why. While we may have been trained in previous religious circles that such a question expresses doubt and unbelief, actually it is a pathway to greater understanding and learning. Hi, this is Barry Phillips with 10-Minute Torah, day number one of the Torah portion, Vayetzi, meaning, and he went. Let's go to Bereshit of Genesis chapter number 28, and let's read verse number 10, which says, And Yaakov went up from Beersheba and went toward Haran. So let's ask the question, why? Why is he going? What's going on here? Well, obviously, then we have to back up just a little bit and read something just previous. Let's go back to verses 8 and 9. And it says, So Yaakov saw that the daughters of Kenan did not please his father Yitzhak. And Esau went to Ishmael and took Mahalath, the daughter of Ishmael, Abraham's son, the sister of Nebaioth, to be his wife, besides the wives that he had. Which wives are we talking about? Now we go back to chapter number 26. The end of that chapter in verse number 34, when Esau was 40 years old, he took his wives, Yehudith, the daughter of Barry, the Hittite, and Basimuth, the daughter of Elon, the Hittite. And it says in the following verse, verse 35, and they, that is the marriage of these two women, were a bitterness of spirit to Yitzhak and Rivka. Mama and daddy are not happy. Why? Because Esau has been trained and taught to believe in the power of the covenant that Yah gave to Abraham. He has been trained to believe that his future is not incidental or non-consequential, but rather extremely important. So then why would he marry into a paganistic culture that does not share the same values that he was raised to believe in? One might surmise that it's because he does not value those values and he does not think valuable the future that he has, he has been called to. That he can do whatever he wants, and he can still have the future, perhaps. It also would stand to reason, then, that any children that he and these Hittite women have are going to be raised in competing worldviews with two different ways of understanding life, two world perspectives, and it's going to be a problem. Matter of fact, if we go down to chapter 27, the last verse, verse 46, Rivka says to Yitzhak, I am disgusted with my life because of the daughters of Het. This is not a minor problem. Rivka is extremely upset. She is worn out. She says she's disgusted with this. Esau is seeing the blessing that he thought belonged to him being given to his brother Yaakov. He's expressed anger, resentment, and a threat to kill his own brother because he stole my birthright. Well, you sold it, Bubba. And by right of birthright, Yaakov got the blessing that you ignored and thought not valuable. Yes, it could have been done a different way, perhaps, but it's done. So Rivka says, we got to get Yaakov out of here. Yaakov needs to go back to my family and find wives there, lest he do like Esau and marry into these pagan women around here. Esau understands something's not right, so he goes to Ishmael. And among Ishmael's daughters, he marries into that family, thinking perhaps it's going to appease his parents. So before we get to Yaakov and his journey, let's take a little look at this. Why are we given this information? Nothing in the Torah is non-consequential. Everything is there for a reason. And so one might ask, what does Esau marrying into the family of Ishmael have to do with Yaakov going to the family of Levan in Haran and marrying among his daughters. If there is an Esau-Ishmael alliance, are we then to see a yaakov Levan alliance? And what would these alliances be about? Why? 
word teaches us that the end has been decreed or declared from the beginning. So when we read these storylines and narratives of the events in the lives of the patriarchs and, and Noah and, and Adam and Hava and the garden and so on, it's not just what happened, but it's a picture prophetically at another level of study what might happen maybe even in our day. So in our day has Esau made an alliance with Ishmael? It's a good question. Let's see if we can answer that. Ishmael is the son of Abraham, so he's Hebrew on the father's side. He is the son of Hagar on his mother's side. He is Egyptian or Mitzrayim. He is a mixed people. He is the progenitor, the ancestor of the Arabic peoples. The Arabic peoples do indeed claim Abraham as their ancestor. Unfortunately, they are, for the most part, wrapped up in the religion of Islam. So the Arabic Ishmael identity in our day is Islamic, Muslim. Esau uh, is known also as Edom. He is called as much in last week's Torah portion. Edom says in Psalms 137, verse number 7, that Jerusalem needs to be raised or destroyed down to the foundation. And the psalmist cries that, Remember, O Yah, what Edom has done and what he cried out for. The ones who actually destroyed Jerusalem down to the foundation were the Romans under General Titus. He destroyed the city, not leaving stones one upon the other, as Yeshua prophesied in Matthew 24, verse 2. He completely destroyed the city, the temple in particular. So, when Edom cries out for the city of Jerusalem to be destroyed, it is Rome that actually causes it to be done. The rabbis then make a connection between Edom, Esau, and Rome. Has Rome made an alliance with Ishmael or the Arabic peoples? Rome and the version of the Roman church has indeed, in 2019, Pope Francis signed a document called the Document on Human Fraternity with the um, sheikh whose name is, if I can find this here, Imam Ahmed El Tayyib. And the goal of this is to eventually, in 2022, next year, to build and construct the Abrahamic family house. This will be a synagogue, a church, and a mosque, all on the same property, promoting the unity of the house of Abraham, perhaps the one world religion. We knew this would take place eventually. Maybe we just did not expect it quite this quick. So if the scripture in Torah is giving us a, a, a perspective and a prophetic clue of an Ishmael Esau alliance, then maybe we should look to the counterpart and see if there's going to be a Levan Yaakov alliance. We'll look at that tomorrow. Before tomorrow, let's ask a few more questions. Number one, I want to understand why that Yaakov is leaving Beersheba the well of the oath, and he's headed to Haran. Remember that Abraham refused to allow his son Yitzhak to go back there. Yitzhak received the blessing and was forbidden to return to that place, but a servant was sent in his place instead. Yaakov receives the blessing. Esau gets to stay home, but he's sent to Haran. Why? Would it be perhaps because if a servant went in his stead that he would have only come back with maybe Leah or Raquel, but not both? Yah wants him to redeem both. And I understand the whole plural wise thing. We'll get into that. Um, is the bride only to be found in exile? Is there a character difference between Yitzhak the father and Yaakov the son that allows the son to go where the father could not go? 
I'm scratching my head and I'm asking why. We'll try to find out some of these answers this week. Think on these, and we'll talk again tomorrow. Till then, shalom. Thank you.